we can view God in two ways. Firstly, considering Him as He exists in Himself, independent of the cosmos, which encompasses everything other than God. From this standpoint, the majority of Muslim thinkers assert that the essence of God, as God in Himself, is beyond human comprehension and knowledge, emphasizing the concept of incomparability. Alternatively, if we associate the cosmos with God, we must acknowledge the various relationships established between God and the cosmos. These relationships find expression in divine names. We can assert either a complete distinction between God and His creations, reaffirming incomparability, or acknowledge a certain degree of similarity. It's also possible to adopt both perspectives simultaneously. To discuss these two perspectives, we need to make differentiation with the most apparent being the differentiation between God and the cosmos. This serves as our starting point. The existence of the cosmos implies a reality in God that brings it into being, highlighting the dependence of the cosmos on God. However, specific divine attributes govern various dimensions or qualities within the cosmos. In this context, the term relationship or relation, nisba, is crucial in understanding the dynamics between God and the cosmos. The core Quranic teaching emphasizes the oneness of God, stating, There is no God but He. It is Tawid. While affirming God's oneness, a paradox arises as we, the speakers, introduce duality through our discourse. The act of asserting God's oneness inherently involves a dualistic element, as we are the ones articulating it. Although our discourse claims to establish the unity of God, it paradoxically introduces duality, whereas God in His unity transcends all duality. In mm. essence, the concept of duality is tied to the nature of human discourse about God. Recognizing God requires an understanding of the limitations inherent in our own conceptions. According to the perspective of incomparability, none knows God but God, emphasizing the inherent limitations of human understanding. Most Muslim thinkers assert that the distinction between what can and cannot be known about God establishes a conceptual separation between God and the essence of God. Strictly speaking, the essence, per se, exists without any relationships with anyone or anything. When discussing relationships, we refer to the essence as a God. Therefore, in a precise sense, there are two gods, the God of our conception, subject to discourse, and the real God beyond our conceptualization, thus being unknowable. The God of discourse is confined to our understanding. The other God is beyond meaningful discussion, as articulated by Ibn Arabi in his exploration of the God of belief, distinct from God in his essence. However, it is crucial to note that there is no ontological distinction, as ultimate reality, wujud, remains singular. Exploring the relationship between incomparability and similarity in God requires an examination of the qualitative implications embedded in theological positions. A straightforward approach to this investigation involves demonstrating how Quranic names attributed to specific aspects of existence are linked to either or both perspectives. At a fundamental level, all divine names can be interpreted through the lens of God's incomparability. The Quran's assertion that naught is like unto him is a universal statement applicable to any name of God. If nothing is comparable to him, our comprehension becomes challenging because understanding typically relies on similarity and knowability. God, being omniscient and all-powerful, exists in a realm utterly distinct from our limitations of ignorance and weakness. Examining Islamic theology as a whole refers to primary emphasis, both dedicated to illustrating the oneness of God. Despite the presence of anthropomorphic imagery in the early period, the prevailing stance in theological discourse emphasizes divine incomparability. Interpretations of references to God's eyes, hands, feet, etc. in the Quran and Hadith evolved towards rational explanations that explicitly excluded any similarity with human attributes bearing the same names. This inclination was shared by many early philosophers. However, certain Sufi thinkers such as Ibn Arabi did not readily dismiss Quranic references to God's hands and eyes as mere figures of speech. Instead, Ibn Arabi, building on the ideas of his predecessors, formulates a doctrine of similarity as a complement to the prevailing emphasis on divine incomparability. In his perspective, neither position can be exclusively held. To put it succinctly, for Ibn Arabi, God is similar in his incomparability and incomparable in his similarity.
According to his viewpoint, maintaining both positions is essential for achieving perfect knowledge. In describing God, everything applicable is a negation from creatures, as all of God's attributes belong exclusively to Him. Using familiar words to reference the divine reality merely underscores our limitations, highlighting the impossibility of expressing the unknowable in language. However, the Quran also introduces the concept of God's similarity, emphasizing His nearness to His creatures. Beyond portraying divine incomparability and human insignificance, the Quran assures us of God's accessibility and presence with His servants. God is not only distant and beyond the grasp of our small dust, but is also ever-present, guided by divine mercy and generosity, which play a decisive role in this ontological relationship. It is emphasized in the Quran. He knows that which enters the earth and that which issues therefrom, that which descends from heaven and that which ascends thereto. He is with you wheresoever you are, and God sees whatsoever you do. We did indeed create man, and we know what his soul whispers to him, and we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. To God belong the east and the west. Wheresoever you turn, there is the face of God. God is all-encompassing knowing. Sufism, or Islamic spirituality, has long been preoccupied with a perspective that emphasizes the intimate relationship between God and human beings. This is particularly evident in texts addressing the personal connections between God and humans, such as prayers and supplications, where appeals to God's kindness, mercy, forgiveness, and generosity have consistently held a central role. Stretch forward tally of the divine names mentioned in the Quran, such as merciful, compassionate, kind, generous, and forgiving, reveals that names implying God's closeness to and concern for human beings far outnumber those that depict him in terms of distance and transcendence. Those names of closeness and warmth suggest that God is intricately involved in the intimate way of everyday human life. Quote, When my servants ask thee about me, truly I am near. I answer the call of the caller when he calls me, so let them respond to me and believe in me that they may be led aright. It's noteworthy that Ibn Arabi, while highlighting the divine origin of all receptivity in the world, uses that specific verse to assert that God himself possesses the attribute of receptivity. The names that showcase God's giving and loving nature are emphasized, indicating his receptivity to human concerns. Additionally, Ibn Arabi notes that God responds to the call of the caller through attributes like bounty and generosity. When conceptualizing God as distant, incomparable, and inconceivable, highlighting his greatness, power, majesty, holiness, etc., this understanding depicts him with Jalaliya aspects, signifying tremendous attributes. In this perspective, we have no impact on him, while everything about us and our actions stems from his activity. Conversely, viewing God as loving, near, generous, and forgiving portrays him as receptive to our wants and needs, reflecting Jamaliya aspects, or fascinant attributes. It is not simplifying to categorize most institutionalized forms of Islam based on their emphasis on incomparability or similarity. Sharia, Islamic law or fiqh, as well as discursive theology, tend to highlight God's overwhelming power, authority, and the lordly aspects of the divine reality. The focus is often on the imperative for human obedience due to the potential negative consequences of God's wrath. In this emphasis, the warm and maternal dimensions of mercy, compassion, and love are not typically forefronted. Sharia and theology, therefore, stress incomparability. Even among Muslims who emphasize similarity, the priority is usually given to incomparability. This is done to prevent deviations from Islamic norms and potential rejection by the Muslim community. Moreover, the Sufis are known for emphasizing that human beings must acknowledge the limitations inherent in all created things. Due to these limitations, the divine reality takes precedence over the relative reality of created things. To perceive reality accurately, individuals must first recognize their own weakness and incapacity, acknowledging the nothingness of the relatively real in the face of the absolutely real. By acknowledging the nothingness of the relatively real, the existence of the absolutely real can be apprehended. This implies in practice that aspects of Islam emphasizing incomparability take precedence over those emphasizing similarity. As Sharia and theology emphasize incomparability, Highlighting God's greatness and human insignificance, adherence to the Sharia becomes the foundational pathway to God. Following God's commands and submitting to the divine will serve as the basis for opening oneself to God's mercy, love, kindness, and generosity.
In this framework, individuals first observe the rules akin to a king's court, and only then are they granted access into the presence of God. Moreover, the Quran delineates human attributes in a way that sheds light on the nature of human responses to incomparability and similarity. From the viewpoint emphasizing incomparability, the dominant attributes of God perceived by human beings are Jalaliyah, such as the Subduer, al kahar the Avenger, Al-Muntakim, the Compeller, Al-Jabbar, etc. In this context, it can be said that the human being is depicted as a servant before God. The most esteemed human quality is submission to God's will, manifested through the adherence to his Sharia. This portrayal of the human condition is contingent on a Lord issuing commands. In this hierarchical structure, heaven governs over earth, and human beings are expected to follow the law, displaying the respect befitting the Lord. Simultaneously, humans retain the freedom to disrupt the equilibrium between heaven and earth by choosing not to obey the commands. From the viewpoint that emphasizes similarity, the dominant attributes of God recognized by the human being are Jamalia, like the All-Merciful, Al-Rahman, the All-Compassionate, Al-Rahim, the Pardoner, Al-Afu, the Most Gentle, Al-Latif, etc. In this viewpoint, the human being can be considered God's vicegerent, Khalifa, endowed with the knowledge of the names of all things. This envisions the human as a reflection of God. The imparting of the names of all things to humans suggests that they bear within themselves the attributes of all things, which are none other than the attributes of God, essentially, the signs of God's names. This viewpoint highlights an active element in human nature, as humans are seen as standing in God's place as rulers over the cosmos. While they remain receptive in relation to God, a positive and constructive engagement with the cosmos is explicitly emphasized. Given that people carry within themselves the divine attributes, they possess the power to elevate or degrade, to preserve or destroy. The divine attributes actively manifest through human beings in this understanding. Put differently, the concept of servanthood is rooted in the notion of divine incomparability, highlighting the insignificance of human beings in the face of God. On the other hand, the notion of vicegerency is grounded in divine similarity, emphasizing that human beings manifest nothing but the attributes of God. Considering human beings as divine forms collectively positions them as lords over all partial reflections of God. In summary, the perspectives on God within major expressions of Islamic thought can be viewed as a spectrum ranging from incomparability to similarity, encompassing various intermediate positions. Excessive emphasis on incomparability might lead to the heretical notion of God being entirely disconnected from the world. Conversely, an overemphasis on similarity can result in unificationism and anthropomorphism, suggesting that God and human beings are identical or one. Both extremes have arisen at times and have been strongly denounced by the larger Islamic community. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.